Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. Now we've taught you up to this point basically several different methods of importing, bringing our images into Lightroom. Now typically how the Lightroom workflow goes is that you're going to import your images, you're going to apply develop setting of those images to develop them, and then whatever you need to take a step further, you're going to take into Photoshop, and then you export the final image. Now before we get to exporting, let's talk about how to take these images into Photoshop to do additional editing. And we're also going to talk about the different options on taking those images in. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to apply some develop settings to this. I'm going to hit D to shortcut me to my develop module. We have image 2, uh, let's see, this is 2.11 selected. We're just going to apply some basic settings. I just want to see a difference between this and the original file. So it doesn't really matter what we do here. I'm going to warm it up. I'm going to boost up the highlights lower the shadows. This is, by the way, not what I would typically do to edit this image. We just want it to look different uh, from the original. And that looks fine right there. What we're going to do now is we're going to hit uh, Control E or Command E on a, a Mac, or we can right click. Again, there's a million ways to do this. We can right click anywhere in the image, hit Edit in Photoshop, or we can go up to our photo menu, and again, we can hit Edit in Photoshop. Now, I'm going to hit Control E because that's my favorite way to take it into Photoshop. And now we have three different options as far as what to edit. Do we want to edit a copy of this image with the Lightroom adjustments? Do you want to edit a copy of the image without the Lightroom adjustments? Or do you want to edit the original file? Now, if we edit a copy of the Lightroom adjustments, what it's going to do is bring up Photoshop with our Lightroom adjusted file. So if we compare these two, we have the exact same image. Now, if I close this without saving, and I hit no, it's going to remove that file from Lightroom, so it's not in Lightroom. If I hit Edit again, I'm going to hit Control E one more time, do that one more time, bring it into Photoshop, and now I'm going to hit Control S or Command S on a Mac. I go back into Lightroom, and now we have the PSD file that's automatically imported and saved right next to the original. Now you guys remember why uh, we actually went into the preferences, and when we were setting the preferences, I said I don't like to stack my PSD files with the original image. If you stack them, they're going to show up as one image and you have to unstack them to see them. So this is how I like it where the images actually show up right next to each other as opposed to being stacked on top of each other. So that's why we selected that preference back then. Let's go back into Photoshop and I'm going to apply just an action of this image just to change it again. Uh, we have our SR Lounge uh, Vintage Pack loaded up and I have one of the mixologies here, Film Circa 1920, that we're going to apply to this image. So I'm going to hit play. When that's done, we're going to hit Control S again, and then we're going to hit Control W or Command W on a Mac to close it out, and we're going to go back to Lightroom. And now we can see that the preview for this image has been updated since we updated the PSD file. Let's go back to this original image. Let's hit Control E again, and this time let's look at this edit a copy. So now when we edit a copy, it's going to edit a copy of the image, but it's not going to have the Lightroom adjustments with it. Okay, so this is the original image without Lightroom adjustments, but it's a copy of that original file. If I close this, go back to Lightroom, it did indeed create a copy of it right here. So we actually would need to remove that copy if we no longer want it. Okay, so I'm going to remove that here. I'll just say delete and delete from disk. We're going to go back to our original file. And now I'm going to write, uh, you can hit Control E or right click again, go to Edit in Photoshop. And now this Edit Original is going to do something different. We're going to edit the original JPEG file. And let me actually show you what it looks like with this PSD because it might be a little bit easier to understand. So if on this PSD file, if I make a modification to it, so if I boost the contrast even further and I do whatever the heck I want to it, and then I hit Control E on this file, once again, if I hit Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments, it's going to take this Photoshop file, make another copy, take it into Lightroom with these settings. If I say edit a copy, it's going to take the Photoshop file of the original without these Lightroom additional Lightroom settings, and we're going to edit a copy of that. If I say edit the original, it's not going to create a duplicate, and what it's going to do is open up that original file and allow me to uh, edit this original file with the film circa 1920. So if I remove or just say uh, click on the eyeball so that we can't see the film circa 1920 action and then hit Control S or Command S on a Mac and then hit Control W or Command W on a Mac to close this. Now I'm going to go back to Lightroom. Now that Lightroom adjustment that we just did is appearing on the image still, but it's appearing over the image that uh, where it's in color because we removed that film effect. So if I hit reset on this, we'll have a PSD copy of that original file. Okay, 
Hopefully this all makes sense to you guys. Basically when we're editing that original, we're editing the original file regardless of what it is, whether it's a PSD or a JPEG. If it's a raw, no big deal because you'll still have the original raw. It's gonna, it's not gonna take you into, it's not gonna save over it basically. But with a JPEG or PSD, you are editing that original file and it is destructive editing. So be careful with that. Okay, so we no longer need this uh, PSD file, so I'm gonna right click on it. We're gonna delete it, and I am gonna delete it from disk because I no longer want it at all. So I'm gonna delete from disk, it's gonna remove it from the library, from the catalog file, and from the disk itself. Now let's go over some of the other uh, Photoshop options that we have. So I'm gonna go back to this original image. Now, if I right click, I'm gonna reset this back to our original JPEG image. So if I right click again, if I go to edit in, and Photoshop, I, I see other Photoshop options here. One is to open this object as, or open this image as a smart object inside of Photoshop. Um, now, teaching about smart objects is kind of out of the scope of this lesson, but basically a smart object is an, is an object that is referencing an external object. So this is an image that's referencing an external one. You can tell it's a smart object because it'll have a little icon next to it right here. And it's a, so it's a smart object. So any updates that are made externally will show up within this image. Now there's certain things in Photoshop that you won't be able to do when you're using smart objects. So it's kind of beyond the scope of this, but that is an option that is available. Let's hit Control W to close this out. I'm gonna hit no, and we'll go back to Lightroom. Now, I'm gonna go back to my menu again by right clicking, and now I have merge to panorama in Photoshop. So if I have multiple images, let's say I have five panoramic images, and we'll just assume that these are those, and I right click and I go to edit in, now that option is gonna be available where I can merge all these images into a panorama and it's automatically taken into Photoshop and it's gonna automatically run the Photoshop panorama stitching. So it's a really useful feature when you guys are shooting panoramic images. Same thing when you guys are shooting HDRs. If you guys are bracketing, whether it's three images bracketed or five images bracketed, when you right click, you can go here and say merge to HDR Pro and it'll automatically open that in Photoshop as an HDR profile. Lastly, and one of my favorite features is this open as layers in Photoshop. Open as layers in Photoshop will immediately allow you to take multiple images and open them up as different layers inside of Photoshop. And it's gonna work like this. It's gonna basically take all three of those and this says it may require the uh, Camera Raw plugin version seven for compatibility, which is funny because this Camera Raw is not actually available yet. The latest one is 6.7. So we're just gonna click open anyway. All right, so it brings up all three images and you can see it's stacking all three images on one single file so that we have them all in one area. So this is really nice when you're doing compositing work or any work where you need to have multiple layers open at once. You can do it directly from Lightroom without having to copy paste and copy paste in Photoshop to get all of your images onto one single file. All right, I'm gonna close this out by hitting Control W or Command W on a Mac, hit no to, save, to not save it out. We're gonna go back to Lightroom and that is basically the different options that we have as far as Photoshop editing goes. Once again, if you guys need to change any of these preferences as far as editing in Photoshop goes, you're gonna go into your preferences by hitting Control comma or Command comma, go into the external editing tab, and now you can edit any of these adjustments. So previously in the preferences, we taught you guys how to set the file formats, the color space, and we showed you guys kind of our optimal settings. If you guys ever need to adjust that, it's right here. All right guys, so, Great job, let's go on to the next tutorial.